Hi there, and welcome to the 55th Octoprint on Air. As usual, I'm your host, Gina Heuske, and this is actually how you pronounce my last name. <laughs> I know many people are surprised that there is no B in there, and yeah, welcome. Um, what are we going to talk about today? Well, pretty much the same thing that we are always talking about uh, during these things. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I have been up to since the last one. Uh, what the next steps are. We'll have a very, very short look at the at the current Octoprint stats, and then I'll also have a very, very short Q&A segment. So um, there are a, a whole bunch of, of, of new folks now on the on the support tiers that allow uh, sending in questions for the Q&A. So I asked for that about a week ago on Patreon and on, uh, on GitHub sponsors, and I only got one back. So this is what we are going to tackle. Um, which makes the whole Q&A segment a bit shorter than I originally had planned for this episode, but yeah. Also, this is the final episode of Octoprint on Air for 2023, which is also why I'm wearing my Santa hat. And uh, for those of you who do not know that, Octoprint will also turn 11 on uh, December 25th, because this was the first time that I posted or shared a public screenshot about what I was working on during my Christmas break now 11 years ago. Last year we had a nice little uh, Christmas uh, and, and birthday uh, com combination party stream uh, for the occasion, but this year uh, we are keeping things way more quiet. Also, a bit of a wording, uh, a bit of a warning. Uh, this thing might be a bit shorter than usual because I will try to keep myself brief as my throat is a bit itchy and sore and I actually have a cough drop in my mouth right now that I hope won't uh, get into the way of me speaking. Um, and I really don't want to risk this getting interrupted by a coughing fit or me losing my voice. So um, just so that you know, uh, I'll try to keep it below an hour and I hope I will be able to achieve that. Maybe even less than 45. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how long this takes. I have some points prepared that I want to talk about, of course, and I'll just go through all of them and then we'll see where we land. Okay, so what I have been up to. Uh, first of all, you might remember that last time I said that, yeah, the funding situation was a bit of a problem because uh, while I had seen a steady increase of around 30% uh, um, uh, in, in, in usage numbers, so things went up over the past three years or two years, I can't remember the time frame right now that I... Uh, that I saw that two, two, I think it was two, uh, I, I saw the same decrease in, in funding. And that was, of course, starting to become a bit unfeasible. Um, I do this full time. I do this, um, yeah, completely 100%. All of my time is, is spent on Octoprint. So if that doesn't pay the bills, then I have a problem. And I communicated that. I also pushed out a blog post briefly after pushing out the last Octoprint on air. And holy cow, <laughs> that was some some overwhelming response that I got to that. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm once once more just in absolute and utter awe at the amazing community that I have here. Um, I called for help and you just answered and solved the problem basically. So. Yeah, Octoprint's financial future is safe for now, uh, and I hope for the, for, for, for the foreseeable future indeed. And yes, I said, it was frankly absolutely overwhelming to see this, this response. And at some point I found myself just cowering under a blanket and, and going, okay, is this, is this all okay? Is this fine? Is this okay? Do I deserve that? And yeah, um, I, 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 I hadn't really realized how much I worried about this until the worry lifted off my shoulders. So I, it, it was an absolutely amazing feeling that you gave me there. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I slept very well for the first time in months after, uh, after this initial response that still keeps going. And yeah, so uh, I'm bad with words when it comes to stuff like that, I think, or I don't know, it's just, I'm, I'm utterly, utterly grateful uh, for you having my back and for you supporting my work on Octoprint and making sure that I can do it for the foreseeable future and or continue doing it for the foreseeable future. And yeah, I'm just absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Um, what else have I been up to? Um, apart from getting my mind blown by all of you. Um, work towards uh, 110.0. So um, let me quickly switch over to my screen here so that I can show you some stuff. Uh, because we have some new features now uh, in 110 that I had been meaning to put in there for a while now. One is um, a new firmware error dialog. Uh, dialog. So when Octoprint receives an error from the printer that leads to it disconnecting or cancelling the print so far, uh, its behavior was that it would put a little bubble uh, in the top right and tell you that and uh, also switch to an error state in the printer state and that was it. So if you uh if you hadn't if you didn't have, have octoprint open at the point you didn't know what actually had happened if you were unlucky enough that the terminal had also scrolled out already and um we also saw a lot of users confused by this because they thought the error was triggered by octoprint and not the firmware and so we also had a bit of a communication issue here so what i now did is um i'm quickly going to fake an error we are simply going to make that one. Um, what I did is you still get this little pop up and you still get the state change, but you now also get, if you have Octoprint open right now, get this error dialog here. That will tell you the error that got triggered. It will tell you what Octoprint did in response to that. So you can have separate configurations there already. You can tell Octoprint to disconnect from the printer and send an M112 in such cases which it will, by the way, also do if it receives a fatal error from the firmware um, in all cases, but regardless of that, uh, you can also tell Octoprint to um, cancel a print, but not disconnect from the printer. And that will reflect here what happened. Um, and you can also tell Octoprint to ignore all errors, which I really do not recommend, but which is in there just in case you just don't want Octoprint to do anything about an error and try to ram its head against the wall of a non-responding firmware. Um, so this is this paragraph. What it will also tell you if it could do anything with this information here, if it if it recognized this error, it will also link you to an FAQ entry where you can read up on um, on on reasons for this error uh, getting reported by your firmware and how to potentially solve it. So for right right now, for example, we have this here for Mintem triggered. Your printer measured a temperature below its configured minimum on head, hot end, bed end or chamber. Make sure to keep your printer in an environment that isn't colder than its min configured minimum temperature. Also check your printer's thermistors and make sure they still measure correctly. Consult your printers or printer's firmware FAQ or community if you need help with that. And we have this for a bunch of other stuff and this will also get uh, extended as needed. Um, currently this FAQ entry is still hidden, but I'll also, yeah. Uh, unhide it as soon as this feature goes live. Um, and then below that, you also have the the past, I think it's 20 or so lines uh, that went over the line between printer and octoprint just before this error was, re uh, this, uh, was uh, triggered. So this is what happened here. Um, I, I sent that it should trigger a temp error. It triggered a temp error. It also reported not SD printing into some quirks in firmware. This gets merged here because some firmware sends two error lines and Octoprint responds to that and also will attach the second line to the whole error string, which is why this looks a bit weird, but on a regular real uh, error, this looks differently. Um, yeah, and then you also see the state change here. So um, you get the possibility to see what actually happened when this happened. And um, you also get told this, that this error was not caused by Octoprint, but something by your printer's firmware to which Octoprint reacted. So we, we just saw this pop up when the, the error got triggered, right? Okay, what if Octoprint is not open at that point? We'll just reload. And what you now see is the state here is offline after error. Mintem triggered, not SD printing. We just saw that. And you see this little error bubble here. And if you click that, you get this thing back. And you will also get that back um, in case of a, of a print that got cancelled due to an error or something like that. So this information is now persistent on Octoprint, at least until you restart Octoprint. Uh, it's, it's just in memory. It's not persisted to disk. 
and it gets cleared whenever you reconnect to so if, if you're offline and you reconnect to to a printer it will get cleared or also when you start a new print it will also get cleared so if i now connect here you will see it vanished and it's now gone but if we uh, trigger it again it will pop up again and such <clears throat> And yeah, so the hope is that this new feature will enable um, people to more uh, to more easily correctly identify what the heck is wrong, <laughs> what 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 caused this issue, um, to also hold their hand a bit in in trying to debug it on their end, and um, yeah, put them in the way uh, put them on the way to actually solving it themselves instead of having to cry for help. And it will hopefully also reduce the amount of situations where people come in guns blazing. Octoprint cancelled my print when in fact it was a min temp error, a max temp error, a thermal runaway or something, some other problem that the firmware detected in the printer itself and reported and caused things to fail. So that was one of the big things that I wanted to show off today here. The other one is hidden a bit uh, underneath uh, in, the, in the footer, but before I go there, I will simply show you this. We now have achievements. Um, yeah, they are hidden currently down here in the, in the footer or rather in the about dialogue. Uh, you see that 35 all in all will ship with version 110.0. Uh, we have things here like canceling your first print, finishing 10 prints in one day, better safe than sorry. We also have some hidden features like here, send us little helper, start a print between December 1st and December 24th, which is the only one that I'll tell you about here right now. Um, and you have a whole bunch of them to discover. And some of them, and this is actually part of uh, tackling the whole funding thing with Octoprint long term, will also contain a little call to action like yeah, if, if it looks like you are getting value out of Octoprint, an achievement might remind you to, if you are not already supporting it in any kind of, in any kind of shape or form or something, now might be a good time. Um, but I thought this would also be a little fun thing in general to have. And um, the nice thing about implementing achievements, in order to be able to implement achievements, I also had to implement instance stats, which you can also find now here in the About dialog. Currently, there is not much to see here. This might might get extended in the future, but it will give you some information about since when instance stats are collected, uh, on which on which version the, the collection started, uh, which version or how many versions this particular Octoprint instance has seen. So if you upgrade, it will see that this is now a new version and, in, and, and, and increment this year. Uh, that will allow you to see how long or how many versions you've already happily upgraded through, how often the server, server was restarted, uh, how many prints you did and how many finished, uh, total print duration of all prints, whether cancelled or, or failed or not, uh, versus those that actually successfully finished, and also the longest print. And as I said, stuff like that will also be extended most likely in the future. Um, the same goes for achievements. All of them have a little logo. All of them show up here. All of them have a little link where you can show all achievements. And for now, that's it. Long term, I might also add some possibilities to track that uh, centrally on a, on a website, if you, so, if you so wish. But I'm not sure if this is actually something that is desired. Uh, this is just, yeah, an, a, a, little, a little something, a little gimmick, basically, to... Um, to 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 uh, give you something neat to look at and to give me some place to or some 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 ways to remind people that all of this development that happens and that goes into Octoprint and the maintenance and the community management and the server costs for for community forums and such and 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 all of this costs money and that uh, some funding could be appreciated and I still feel really really bad about uh, even asking for that but yeah. I should have asked earlier or I, or I wouldn't have felt worry, more worried and worried and worried over the past years. Um, and I hope the way that this is now done is as unobtrusive as possible. It will only ever remind you basically if you yeah, had some positive thing just happen. And um, it is also just a little additional line down here 
that uh, reminds you. You can ignore that safely. It is not going to nag you into oblivion or something. So, yeah, I found this to be a good idea to um, combine a neat gimmick with something that is needed for the project's future long term. As I said, short term or yeah, for the foreseeable future, all things are fine now, but I'm already starting to worry what will be in one or two years when people have forgotten again that they can, can support the project. So I'm trying to make this more visible and this is part of that. Okay, so what else did happen? Well, um, plenty of bug fixes and tiny improvements as usual that still were in the backlog. Um, one of these things is, for example, which you might see here, the graph is behaving a bit differently. Uh, it used to be that it only spanned from when we got the first data to this and the x-axis got changed until it filled out the whole 30 minute, regular 30 minute cutoff range of the temperature graph. This no longer is the case now. You get the whole 30 minutes here and if there is no data for that, you simply don't see any data. Um, and that will hopefully solve issues with the scale constantly jumping around and such that that was actually a bug report that I got. Um, and that was the cough drop that just died. Um, <clears throat> um, what else? So um, something that is tricky to see maybe a bit when you reload the page, uh, it might 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 be might be uh, recognizable or, or, or realizable. Um, we have um, um, some some I, I did some rework in the whole HTTP layer of things. So I, I had a bug report sitting in the backlog for a while now that uh, let me switch you back here um, that um, yeah basically was um, if you queried the server often in some specific way, sometimes it would produce an error. On, on an endpoint that usually would work just fine. So the, the, the connection got closed. And that actually was down to keep alive connections getting closed when they shouldn't, apparently. At least that is what I gathered from the bug report. And when I dug into that, I realized that some stuff in, um, in Octoprint's server layer was a bit suboptimal and improved this. And by that actually it did fix the bug as well. And the consequence of that is now that all Flask so everything that goes against the API goes through something called uh, WSGI uh, from the asynchronous Tornado framework that is Octoprint's web server, basically, um, through to the, to the Flask layer that implements the whole API. And that is synchronous. So, so far it was so that Tornado was single threaded and as long as it was serving one request, it couldn't respond to another one. So if Flask was, uh, so if it was serving one Flask request, it couldn't serve another one. Sorry for that. And um, that was a bit of a problem with long running requests on the Flask layer causing issues in Octoprint. None of these exist, but plugins could cause problems there. And what I changed now is that um, Whenever Tornado hands over a request to, to WSGI, it will spawn a new thread. And this is actually how the WSGI um, layer behaves. Uh, the, the, the standard one behaves in, in current Tornado. The problem is that we need a custom one because we need some, some custom magic to happen on, 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 on requests for reasons that really go beyond what I want to discuss in this particular episode now. <coughs> uh, but... Uh, uh. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Um, but um, long story short, the the changes in Tornado were never ported back to our custom implementation. So I did that. And then I spent the next two weeks or so debugging <laughs> the problems, the very weird problems that arose through, through that. I suddenly had situations where images were uh, sent out in response to, to, to uh, JSON requests, which caused hilarious bugs in the front end and uh, in the end-to-end -end tests as well and yeah so it took a while to iron out everything there uh, but I think I managed to and now as a result we have a server that is way more performant uh, can handle more concurrent requests the page loads faster and uh, also it should be more resilient against plugins that implement long-running endpoints so to speak so 
hopefully that is going to be a good thing. We might see during the RC phase that there is still the one or other bug in there that I then have to iron out, but I really hope that I manage to punch all of them uh, into the ground now. Yeah. Um, then there were also some leftovers from the big camera pluginification that I had to iron out that got overlooked in the past release and uh, some other stuff like that. And if you ever get curious what the heck I'm even working on, I would like to remind you about the existence of the Octoprint backlog, uh, which lives at backlog.octoprint.org and uh, basically allows you to have an overview of over all the issues in all the Octoprint related repositories and specifically also into what is um, already scheduled for what uh, release in the shape of this this milestones part here. So the next release is 1.10.0 and all the tickets, all the pull requests, um, everything that got into, into it got, it got into the GitHub issue tracker, all the GitHub pull requests, um, pull request stuff uh, one through one way or the other is in here. And everything that is said to done um, is one step closer to, to actually cutting a new release. And uh, this is all of the stuff now that is currently in the 110.0 milestone. And yeah, you also have a lot of stuff here that doesn't have a milestone, but everything that got tagged with 110.0 is now done. Um, there is also, of course, things that never make it into the backlog because uh, either because I uh, want to keep them a secret for as long as possible, which I did with the achievements, or uh, simply because it's minor things that I notice while developing. So I will not stop development in that case, create an issue, fill out everything, um, try to wrap around my head around phrasing stuff so that it actually makes sense in any ways, but I will just do my two lines of fix, push them and deal with that when I write the change log. Um, and uh, speaking of that, you can always look on the maintenance branch if you want to look into what goes into the next release, which is this one here and there look into the commits that get uh, that got uh, got pushed and yeah this is all of the stuff that will go in there and if you want to compare it with current master we will get precisely what is going to happen and uh, funnily enough this is also how i always write my change log i go through the milestones the the stuff tagged through through the through the through the new release milestone and then i go through the whole commit log and um, write the change log from that and the reason I do it that way is that generating it automatically from issues or from commit from commits, I think would give the wrong perspective on a change log because yeah, I, I think a change log is something that should be readable by the end user. Whereas a commit, commit notes and issues and such are things that should be uh, readable and and granular on the granularity for, for developers. And generating something that is targeting developers for end users is something that I think doesn't really work well. So this is not something that I do, even though it usually means that I spend half to a full day just going through a commit log and uh, issues and um, writing a change log. Read my change logs, please. <laughs> I put a lot of work in there. Okay. Um... Yeah, what else was I up to? So you re might remember that I mentioned that I uh, was really looking forward to a San Francisco trip to um, meet up with all the other GitHub stars at the internal GitHub stars, uh, GitHub Nova conference and also GitHub Universe. Yeah, that never happened. I managed to get COVID just days before uh, my, my, my flight <laughs> over there and that put an end to these plans. I thankfully got back all of my money for the flights and the hotel and all of that but yeah that was perfect timing and ironic yeah I mean it was also the first time ever that I caught COVID and I managed to do it just like four days before I was finally about to leave this continent for the first time that sucked hard um but yeah uh, I couldn't change it so I just had to accept it um, yeah, that was also why I spent most of, uh, yeah, the better part of November sick like a dog and cutting my lungs out and, um, 
which is why most of the things that happened since the last video happened uh, happened only from mid-November until now. Um, I uh, yeah, I, I thankfully seem to have made it through mostly unscathed. I'm just still coughing and yeah, currently I'm also fighting a sore throat again, uh, but I think that is something that, yeah, something new, not something that is a leftover. Um, <clears throat> and that is also the reason why uh, I, yeah, I have to, I had to postpone the first RC for 110 towards the new year, because the things that I just showed you, the, um, achievements and the arrow dialogue and all of that these these were things that i wanted to have in the release but simply didn't manage to finish uh, in time to still be able to push out a, a first release candidate as well and um so this is actually that that brings me nicely to what are the next steps <laughs> Because, yeah, so obviously the first uh, or the next steps that the, the immediate next steps that will happen are a holiday break. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll spend some time with my family. I spend some time with friends. I will not be attending 37C3, but um, um, because I, I, I simply need some quiet and chill days. But once 2024 comes around, I'll be back and then I'll look into getting out a, a, a first release candidate. So my goal is currently to get this out in January still. And I really, really, really hope that will work out. And that the backlog that will create itself during my absence will not disagree with this plan. But we'll have to see. <coughs> yeah. Uh, and... Um, that, uh, yeah, that will then be something that I hope to be able to push into full production ASAP as well, of course. Yeah. So for now, these are the only plans, the only immediate plans. Well, of course, the always, the, the usual uh, additional to-dos are also in there, finishing the dog mi migration and com layer and all of that. But these are all things that are not immediate next steps, but rather things that I hope to get to once the immediate next steps are, get out, uh, got, uh, are out of the way again. Okay, so um, now let's have a quick look at the stats, though they are not really that interesting currently. No new releases, so new, no, no fun update stats to, to, to take a look at. The usual fluctuation over the twenty-four hour period on the uh, on the on the on the uh, online instances, octopen version distribution. Yeah, so uh, one nine three is dominating now for one for, for some reason one seven two still stays strong in there, which I find a bit worrying indeed. Um, I think that was the last version that supported Python two, so that could be the reason here. Please update to Python 3. Python 2 has been out of end of life now for two years or three even. I I think three. <laughs> so it's really tight. Oh, God. <laughs> that almost turned into a cuffing fit. I could still. I shouldn't laugh. Um, so um, printing stats are also quite normal, I would say. Uh, at, at, at least as long as... Uh, you only look at seven days. Uh, I, I noticed something earlier. If you switch to 30 days. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> I have... <coughs> oh, crap. I have no idea what went on here. But a whole print farm from the looks of it got very, very busy between December 4th and December 5th. Or something dumped a lot of bogus data. That could also be. But there is no other outlier uh, stuff uh, in, in, in that time range. It is just, yeah. Maybe it was some really long-running prints that finished here. I don't know. It's just, it dwarfed the regular hourly print duration a bit with this. So um, this this stuff gets locked at the end of a print. So if something like a, 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 two, a one month print job ends here, this will lock as one month at this hour. Um, 
because yeah i could i i could lock this stuff also with the approximated or rather the estimated print duration at the start of the print job but then i don't know if it gets cancelled or not so this stuff gets locked or tracked at the end yeah and 151,000 total unique instances that is hovering around 150 to 152 over the past uh four weeks or so i'm going to be very very curious how things develop over the christmas break uh, how many people are are getting new printers again? Usually, I see a peak be before, just before, uh, before Christmas Eve, and then a complete uh, breakdown during the yeah, basically between December twenty fifth and the thirty first, or rather January first. A lot of people are spending time with their loved ones apparently then and not printing. And then come January, all the people who got new new 3D printers start printing like mad. Or at least this is what it feels like because this is usually the next big peak when I get a new baseline. Um, at least it was like this the, the past years of having anonymous usage tracking going. I am, um, yeah, I we will see if this happens again uh, in January. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this already brings us to the Q&A and I just realized that I forgot to prepare a slide for this single question. So uh, yeah, I'll going to read it for you. So um, Thomas asked, uh, with increasingly more powerful hardware such as the Raspberry Pi 5 to make use of the extra power included, do you think it would be possible to run two instances of Octoprint on one Pi to control two printers with one Pi? Would there be any limitations in doing this? So first of all, you can already do this just fine with the Pi 4 and the Pi 3 as well. So uh, you, you you just start separate instances, point all of them at the separate base folder so they don't start modifying their, uh, their, their files. This is not supported by Octoprint, so they have to have their own base folder and their own config and such. And then this will in theory work. Uh, and Paul Poxdelis, uh, who who uh, has um, yeah who maintains Octoprint Deploy, um, also supports uh, so Octoprint Deploy actually supports this use case. So you can tell Octoprint Deploy, hey, spawn a new instance, please, running on this and this port, and um, that will then I think you even can associate it with a different webcam and such. So uh, all of that is in theory supported. Um, so can be done. And the likelihood of this causing any kind of issues or you running into any kind of limitations with that, of course, uh, decreases the more powerful the underlying system is. So with a Raspberry Pi 4, or yeah, it, it, work, it works with something like four instances, so one for each core on, an, on a Raspberry Pi 3, most likely. Most likely also on an RPi 4 and most likely even with more on an RPi 5. And the reason why I say most likely and not, yeah, sure, drive multiple printers concurrently is that, from my experience, um, people will severely overestimate the power that they have available. So um, if I now tell people, yeah, sure, you can run multiple instances of Octoprint on, on one Pi and drive multiple printers from that, this is something that I will happily support and help you debug. People will spawn 20 instances of Octoprint for their 20 printers and also install Nextcloud and Home Assistant and maybe also even Pi-hole on this Raspberry Pi and then complain when stuff doesn't work as expected. So, um, yes, you can do that. You can do that with a Pi 4 as well. You can even do that with a Pi 3. Uh, try your luck, but I will never go on public record saying that Octoprint officially supports such and such many printers on that and that model of a Pi. Because the thing is that people install plugins on there. People install additional software on there. I cannot stop them from doing that. And all of that, of course, influences the available resources that are there then for driving the actual print job. And yeah, since I cannot anticipate what people will throw on there, I cannot anticipate what people, yeah, what 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 problems will people will run into if they throw up throw all of that in there. So what I can say is, officially, 
I support and condone running one single instance per one single Pi, because then the Pi will have plenty of resources to work whatever uh, you throw in there with regards to plugins and, and additional third-party clients that query the API and whatnot, because there are simply most likely more than enough resources. But sure, <laughs> you can try more. And uh, yeah, I actually still have a little project here with a thin client from a Lenovo that I bought last year before the holidays and still haven't set up, but which is something that I want to throw several instances of Octoprint on instead of having one Pi per printer that is currently sitting here next to me. Um, and also throw some farming setup on there and be able to have uh, all of that on one machine in that I can keep up to date instead of having multiple that I need to maintain, which is now the case. But yeah, again, this is what I do personally. This is not something that I will go on the public record anywhere to say you should do as well, because I do not know your background. I do not know if you can properly judge what you can throw on there and, uh, and what you can't if you know how to use top, if you know what system load is and such. So yeah, this is the reason and I hope this is understandable. Too long didn't watch? Yes, you can do that. No, I will not help you if it breaks. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and that was the only question that we had. And we are now at some a bit over half an hour, which is great because it starts to scratch more and my cough drop is in, is gone. Uh, so I will just wrap this up now. I, yeah, uh, I hope it was interesting. I hope uh, the new stuff that is coming with 110 has you as excited as it, as it has me, because frankly, I think that uh, especially the error dialogue will do a lot in in helping, especially newbies and, but also, yeah, people who simply do not want now to spend half an hour Googling, uh, but instead just, yeah, prefer to get the, hopeful, hopefully get the solution uh, served to them right in this error dialogue. And um, yeah, once more, thank you for being such an amazing community that ensures uh, that I can continue to do all that for them. Uh, it means a lot and is a very humbling experience all in all. Um, and yeah, uh, Last but not least, of course, happy holidays, uh, happy new year. Uh, don't forget to wish uh, Octoprint a happy birthday on December 25th. And I will see all of you in probably in late January 2024 for, with the next installment of these. Before we thought of that, I will have to find some time to actually work on stuff to be able to report on anything again. Uh, I will announce that on Patreon and such again. Um, and yeah, so as always then, until next time, stay healthy and happy printing. Bye.